Hello everyone, a little bit uh, different video than usual on this channel. Um, I want to cover topics that is very important for beginners and the topic is how to actually learn Unreal Engine 5. So I'll just speak uh, from my personal experiences and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Number one would be don't rush, don't make your dream game instantly as your first game. Yes, this is very uh, widespread problem. A lot of people uh, seem to see YouTube tutorial and then they're like, okay, I'm gonna create GTA 5. No, you're not. So, why you're not gonna create GTA 5 is pretty self explanatory. Uh, in the Rockstar uh, developer team, there is thousands of developers. So, if you, and this, these are good developers. These are not beginner developers as well. So to create such um, big games, you require more people simply because there is uh, so much aspects in the game development like, okay, I need this guy to do music. I need this guy to do the art. I need to, this guy to design my level. Uh, what is the concept of the game? Uh, who is going to program the game? Who is going to animate the game? There is so many stuff that it would take way, way too much time for a single game developer to cover. But I'm gonna go back to this uh, topic later on when I talk about assets. So let's go to the second part. Okay, so the second thing would be YouTube tutorials. You're watching them wrong. If you still don't know how to use Unreal Engine 5 and you are stuck there looking at tutorials, you are basically in tutorial hell, you don't know what is happening, you're just copy pasting and nothing you're not learning anything really so this is very uh also very spread problem uh it's simply because um, when you're watching youtube tutorial the teacher is uh, doing what he's doing and he's explaining in the steps what he's doing but you are too busy copying his code that you don't actually hear what he's saying so he's saying Okay, this is why I did that, this is why I did that, and you're like here, okay, let me see what node do I connect. I'm talking about blueprints, for example, now. It's a very big problem, because when you're learning about game development, you need to take everything with um, attention. So whatever happens, whatever you write in your code, whether is it blueprint, C++, C Sharp, whatever you take from the tutorial, you need to understand why that happened okay you don't know how to open drawer perfect i will go to youtube i will type drawer you unreal engine 5 tutorial and i'll see how to open it but when you look at this tutorial you shouldn't be like okay just give me this so i can copy you should be like okay let me see how to actually solve the problem because programming is all about solving problems and sometimes uh you are not going to be able to solve the problem, but someone else on the internet will be able to solve the problem. Also, if you go for the forums and you read the solution, you shouldn't just blindly copy it. You should simply st stay there, activate your brain and say, okay, let me see what happened here. So I, next time you come across the same problem, because you took the last time, you took it with attention, you're probably gonna be familiar, okay, this is problem because of this. I'm missing this, I'm missing that. So that's my biggest um, advice that I can give. YouTube tutorials are great. They can help you improve so much. I'm a self-taught game developer and most of the things I found on the internet, no, I mean, not most, everything I found on the internet and most of the things I found on YouTube and there is so many good YouTube uh, channels, but also uh, when you become more uh, advanced with uh, Unreal Engine, there is also bad tutorials that show bad practices, so you should understand it. And my biggest uh, achievement as a game developer was watching one YouTube video, and I'm like, hmm, this is not really performant. I should do it the other way, and I went with the other way and did it better. That's the best thing that you can. Uh, experience as a game developer, as a beginner game developer, where you actually see, okay, I know what's happening. So trust me, even if you're not there, 
even if you are like second month of Unreal Engine 5, just stay persistent, stay motivated, and everything's gonna be fine. You're gonna learn it. It's impossible to not learn something which you repeat 100 times. So, for example, I will give you this. There is a math test tomorrow. You come tomorrow at the school, your friend is next to you, you are doing the math test. Your friend is very good at the math, but you are very terrible. And he does the whole test, and you just copy from him. And at the end of the day, you get grade maximum, you get 5, and he gets 5. So you have the max grade, just like him. But the next time you come across this problem, he, let's say next day, there is also a test, similar one. But your friend is sick, he doesn't come to school, and then you get the minimum grade, because you don't know what is happening, you just copied. That's the best example you can take as a game development and watching YouTube tutorials. YouTube tutorials are great, don't get me wrong, but you need to take it with attention. So let's go to the third point. My third point is, focus on your goal. What is your goal? There is so many uh, positions that you can be in for a game developer. You don't have to be programmer. You can be artist, you can be level designer, you can be music composer, you can be concept artist. Um, just think about what's your goal, what you want to do, what makes you feel good when you do it, and take it slowly. So, you want to be a level designer. Okay, so don't stress over C++. Learn slowly about level design. C++ is going to come and you're going to tackle it with no issues if you go slow. So, you just need to see, okay, what role do I want to be in? And the role that you like the most, focus on it and do it slowly. That's the best thing you can do. Because, yeah, if you're in the developer, it's true. You're going to be everything. You're going to be programmer. You're going to be level designer. You're going to be concept artist. You're going to be everything. Storyteller. But if you want to work in the professional game industry, focus on one thing. If you want to be in the game developer, then you should... Uh, you know, go very slow with it, because this brings me to a fourth topic, and it's about uh, burnout, and we're gonna talk about it in a second. So what is burnout? This happens when, for example, you are working on your game for 10 hours, you didn't take a break, you want to get it finished, but at the end of it, you feel like, hmm, maybe I should skip it tomorrow. I'm not really motivated. Basically, you're losing motivation for your project. And this is a very common thing, and it happens to everyone. And the thing that um, makes difference in people, in the developers, is who can take it better. So, everyone is going to have uh, burnouts. But to reduce the burnouts, you should really take another um, view to your projects. You should say, okay, this is my project, I really want to get it done, this is what uh, makes me happy, uh, it fulfills my day, I'm gonna do this project for 4 hours today, when I feel I cannot do it anymore, I'm gonna take a walk, I'm gonna do something else. And then, while you're doing something else, trust me, you're gonna be feeling the fe uh, feeling like... I want to go home, I want to work on this project, I really want this project, I want to grind. So, this is a good thing. Um, but if you are feeling burnout and then you are forcing yourself, okay, I have to finish this today, I have to, I have to, this is not good. And most of the times you're just going to end up abandoning your project. So, when you start feeling unmotivated, quit. But not quit with the game development, quit with the project at that point, at that minute. So go walk a dog, take a walk, uh, go to shop, go to mall, uh, go do whatever you want, but don't do game development in that right moment, because you are feeling a burnout, it's very bad, it's the same thing, uh, it cannot, nothing is gonna come good uh, if you are tryharding when you are in the burnout, so I, you just need to understand when are you in the zone, when you're burning out. So, when you feel unmotivated, just simply get up from your PC, 
or go play games. Uh, but just close Unreal Engine 5 and uh, come back to it when you feel better. Because burnout can really destroy the dreams. Okay, so fifth point is, is Udemy worth it? So I tried some Udemy courses, but they say, okay, this course is uh, 100 euros, but just for you today, it's 9 euros. But it's so usual, the sale price, that it became the normal price. And it's very frustrating to see one day it's 100 euro, second day is 9 euro, and back and forth. So what I want to say about Udemy, it's a great uh, platform. You can learn so many great things there. There is so many good uh, t tutors that can teach you Unreal Engine. But also there is on YouTube, the free ones. So there is even some on YouTube that offer Patreon, that offer advanced courses on their Patreon, that I would rather take than some Udemy courses, for example. Um, but what you see on the Udemy, you can pretty much find everything uh, on internet for free, because it's just how bad you want it and how much you want to search. Uh, Udemy is good because, okay, you have uh, 20 euro, you go there, I want to learn uh, basic uh, blueprint for Unreal Engine, and you just uh, learn um, You just learn it. But if you go to YouTube and type uh, Unreal Engine 5 blueprint courses, free, you're gonna see also a lot of great stuff. And uh, one of the channels that I uh, used to watch, and I still do, He's a smart poly. This guy is awesome. He helped me so much with his tutorials and I recommend everyone to look at his videos. And uh, here on the screen you can see a couple of the videos that he made about blueprints that are really good and I recommend them. Six point. Game gems. Game gems are great. You can be a total beginner and you can just enter the game gem on, for example, uh, each .io page, you can enter the game jam and this game jam is really good because it motivates you to finish the product and they say like, okay, this game jam is uh, starting today and it uh, lasts 14 days and you have to get the game going in 14 days because you have a time limit and that helps you work under the pressure and for me, for example, it helped me to finish my first game, the game jam. Uh, I don't think I would finish the first game without Game Jam, to be honest with you, uh, because I would just get in the burnout and I would just quit my project. So yeah, Game Jam, very good. You should try. Also, you can team up with other people. And most of the Game Jams are beginner-friendly as well. Seventh topic. So, can you make a game alone? Yes, you can make a game alone. Well... Actually, you're not making it alone if you are using Unreal Engine 5 because you're working on the engine that has multiple hundred people working on it. But as your project, you're working on your project, can you get your project done alone? Yes, you can. It all depends how simple you can make it. So if you see, for example, uh, okay, I want to make my player uh, run up to hill, you can make this simple. But you can also make it advanced. You can uh, make this player drive a car. You can make this player shoot a gun while he's running. And like you can add so many uh, different stuff in the game that makes it more advanced, right? But it's all about how, uh, what approach you take. You should take into consideration when you are working as a solo game developer, you, your time is money. Because if you're doing it in free time, okay, you have a job, but... If you don't have a job and you are working on a game, you ca you just cannot spend that much time on it if you are like standing in the same place. So, for example, if if you are solo in the game developer, I strongly encourage you to use assets because I will give you an example. Okay, so you are creating a horror game that's located in the Japanese high school, for example. The problem with that is if you go ahead enter the blender and you create all these assets from the Japanese uh, high school it's gonna take you some time it's gonna take you probably a week or even more so hundreds of hours but you can just go to the marketplace and purchase the asset that costs 20 euro and 
if you value your hour for at least one euro, in the 20 hours of your time, you're already gonna be, you know, in the profit. So, when you're doing your game, just try to find something that will help you save time if you're indie. Yes, the custom things are very good and a lot of people like to see custom things, but sometimes, for example, inventory component. That's really, if you're an indie developer and you're working on some advanced in inventory, it's not really worth for you to spend that much time on inventory when you can just purchase one for 30, 40 euros. So you get my point. If you're an indie game developer, you can make a game alone, but you can also use assets from the other people to help you save insane amount of time. And there is nothing wrong with using game assets. There is something called asset flip that we are gonna talk in the next talk. So let's talk about asset flips. Yes, everyone hate them, even the players. Asset flips are one of the worst things that you can get called. So in the real life you can get insulted, but in the game developer world, if someone calls your game asset flip, you did a very bad job. So what asset flip means is basically you went to the marketplace, you bought so many different assets, and then you just paste them, you just glue them to your project, and they make no sense whatsoever together, or you just bought a, a for example, a RPG template, and you change one character and you release the game. It's complete asset flip. No one likes to play these games. So you should... Um, really know the difference between using assets and asset flipping. Because, for example, I need a desk, I need a wardrobe, I need a room uh, for the game. I will just go and buy assets, okay? Because I'm not a good designer. So, this is not asset flip, because I just bought something that I'm gonna use in 5% of my level. Let's say I'm gonna use this bedroom once. But this bedroom it's not um, main gameplay of my game, you know. Um, you know, like, some assets can help you, but don't make the assets that you buy be a center of your game, you know. That's very important. So that brings us to the end of this video. I really liked uh, creating this video, and I hope to create more videos like this in the future, because I like uh, talking about game development. And uh, if you have any questions, Feel free to ask in the comments, and I'll be happy to answer all of them. And if you have any suggestions, when you think something is told wrong in the video, just post comment. I really want to hear other people's opinion. And um, yeah, I hope I help some beginners understand how to actually learn Unreal Engine 5. So that's it from me, and see you in the next video. This tutorial is sponsored by Patreon. Thank you all for your support.